I'm a capitalist with a social conscience. That's the quote from Action SA's Herman Mashaba that stuck out with me during our conversation today. We speak about his humble origins in Haman's Kral being raised by his sisters while his mother worked as a domestic worker, the role that women had and the importance they had in raising him, as well as his grandfather, who believed in him from the moment that he was born and that drove him and pushed him to achieve greatness and instilled in him a sense of value and responsibility for himself and his country. We speak about secret deals between the DA and the ANC and why he chose to start Action SA and get into politics with the view to taking South Africa back onto the right course. His feelings that the ANC have let down South Africa and why he lost faith in the ANC government five years after the first democratic elections. Herman is a passionate and focused man who brings a great sense of business and what it takes to build and develop partnerships as a way of building and growing South Africa. This is a conversation that all South Africans should listen to, as well as those in the international community who need to understand that South Africa, as Herman says, is not the ANC government and South Africans are not the ANC. Welcome to Coffee and Conversations with Champions, the Leadership Edition. Herman Mashaba, it's a tremendous honor for us to have you on the podcast. Thank you for your time. Thank you for joining us today. And for those of us out there who don't know you, which I think is probably about maybe two people in the whole country, uh, could you give us a little bit of a background as to who you are? Who is Herman Mashaba? Oh, thank you very much uh, for this opportunity. Herman Mashaba is a 64-year-old uh, old man, uh, born on the 26th of August, 1959, a year after HFR ruled took over as the Prime Minister of South Africa. So you can imagine, I was born in real difficult uh, the, the times of our, of our history in a small village in Amanskal called Karamutsi, um, mm-hmm. which is about, what, 30, 40 k's uh, north of uh, Pretoria. Yes, uh, brought up uh, by my, in a childhood household because my father decided to die when I was two years old, living my uh, mother to look after us and unfortunately for her to be able to look after us she had to work in johannesburg as a domestic worker and leaving me to be looked after by my sisters uh, the one in charge only 13 years my senior right what, what was that like growing up in the hammond's Kral region at that time and i must say i i think some of the best people in our country come out of hammond's Kral. Everyone that I've met that's come from there has been absolutely wonderful. What was that like as a community and an environment to grow up in? Well, uh, we we lived really and deeply under uh, really poor trying circumstances. Mm. Grew up having to at the young stage going to steal the water from um, from our from a, the Africana farmers in camp from time to time. That for us to really be able to have energy to cook, uh, we had to go and steal uh, wood uh, because mm-hmm. we were not allowed to go and just really fetch it. And electricity completely foreign to us. I only experienced um, um, uh, electricity uh, actually in that village, uh, even when I left, um, there were no electricity. That villa village only got electricity after the 1994 um uh, democratic d- dispensation, but right. obviously, uh, later on, uh, in in my years when I was in high school, I lived with my sister in Temba, which is uh, the, the township across uh, from our village between Babelehi uh, uh, and 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 Haramoti. And uh, yeah, my sister over the years um, uh, managed, and the husband built a house and electrified. For the first time to live in a house where there was electricity and that, that time i was what uh, 15 16 years of age right what what um 
you know, just on that point, and it's something that I've noticed in our country over the years, the woman plays such a vital role, you know, from the grandmother through the mother through the sisters. How important are women in shaping um, South African culture? And I'm not just talking about uh, the gogo with the slipper or a, or a sandal coming after to keep us in line. <laughs> How important are women in South Africa? Well, I think I'm a living example of being brought up by mm -hmm. women uh, because, uh, as I say, my uh, father died when I was two years old, both my, my mother and, and my sisters. And uh, at the age of 22, I decided to get married um, so that I can have a woman who can really protect me. And this right. past Sunday, we, my wife and I just celebrated uh, 42 years of our marriage. And if I look at the role that uh, my mother played in my life, my sisters played in my life, and my wife played in my life, the men talking to you right now mm -hmm. were shaped by women. I've never called someone dead in my life. Calling someone dead in my life is completely foreign because my mother never remarried. Right, right. 100%. But, I, think that, but hmm. I think I need to qualify this. Yes. Uh, someone who played a very important role in, in, in my my value systems and principle mm -hmm. was uh, my grandfather. On the day I was born, on the 26th of August, 1959, for some reason he happened to have been home and uh, went from house to house to tell everyone, calling me high man, which was not my, my name, my, my Mother and father didn't meet uh, Sam Tewu Philip as, as my official names, but my, for some reason, my grandfather decided to disregard them. I don't know where, whether he knew what high man was, but he was going around to uh, the house to house, um, right. uh, late in that community to tell them high man is born. And then I uh, happened to be called high man by the entire, by, by the entire community, including my own parents. So right. I grew up being high man and um by the time i reached 14 15 this was just this high man was too much because my grandfather played such a key role in my life in mm -hmm. defining when i am in terms of the values he, right uh, he told me and instilled in me a sense of self-reliance he, mm -hmm. uh, he taught me the, the discipline he taught me the, the, the value of believing in God and believing in myself. Um, they, they, it gave me self-esteem and instilled mm -hmm. me a sense of um, success. Uh, really throughout his life, uh, from the day I was born until he died in 1978, for him all the time when he was home, he instilled a sense of success in me that I cannot fail. Uh, right. Uh, uh, must accept. I must only accept failure after trying, and okay. and that's how uh, later on. Uh, unfortunately, he was already gone by then because he died in 1978 when I was in matric. Mm -hmm. And uh, but I mean, you can imagine at that time as a young person, I used to despise my grandfather. I thought he would, uh, he was just too much on me. I used to feel that my grandfather's expectations of me were unreasonable. But I tell you, when I reached 22 and mm -hmm. I realized I was running out of time, I was getting old and I needed to do something to succeed because my grandfather instilled it me throughout his life that failure in my life uh, yeah, that is not negotiable. And I must always make sure that I'm in charge of my own life. Right. And he's obviously still with you now, keeping an eye on you. I, I can assure you the way, because I think uh, and the, the older I get every day, the more uh, I actually appreciate the role that is played in, in my life. And unfortunately, it's not uh, that uh, that I can physically, uh, uh, just, uh, you, know, you know, thank him. But right. I, I do it. Uh, I, I actually, uh, I thank my grandfather with the work that I do. Uh, I, um, when I went into business, um, mm -hmm. I, when I got married, I went into business. I was really lucky. I succeeded. And uh, as part of um, 
uh, really some of the principles my grandfather taught me was to take personal responsibility. And uh, just uh, in my late 50s, decided to take the responsibility uh, to save my country and yes. free it uh, from uh, this, uh, the misrule that we've experienced uh, in the last, uh, what, 20, 25 years mm -hmm. of our right. new democratic dispensation. So, so he really, the, the sense I get is your grandfather knew the path that you were on. And he was just there to remind everybody of where you were going. Um, that's an absolutely you, wonderful. If you can, uh, I can ask you, you can mm -hmm. go to uh, that village where I was uh, born and ask mm -hmm. anyone older and uh, my age. Uh, yes. They, they know the pressure this old man used to put uh, upon me. He used to work as a security guard in Harangua for the Harangua municipality and used to come home every month. And then obviously he'll be home for a week during Easter mm -hmm. and that December he'll be home the whole month. Everyone knew the pressure this old man uh, um, put in me. That's why I, uh, I used to really feel really very <laughs> bad. That's why I ended up changing this hymen to Herman. Herman, okay. <laughs> but w what got you to accept the pressure? Because I think a lot of people that are put under pressure, particularly youth or kids, you know, they rebel completely the opposite way and that pressure can almost break them. W what made you decide? that you were going to honor your, your grandfather's view and vision and intention for you? I think it's really, for me, it's natural what I do. Mm -hmm. uh, but what I do every morning before I wake up, uh, I ask for God's uh, blessings for every decision that I take. Mm -hmm. I know I have to take responsibility for the for, for the decisions that I've got to take but uh, what I do every morning I ask for God's guidance that whatever decision that I'm going to take on that particular day yes. I've got to take it with the right intentions it is for that reason um, you know for me that uh, no human being can ever hold a gun um, at my head um, um, uh, for small and other things. Uh, I think it's um, whatever I've done in the 64 years, um, yeah. even mistakes I've made, uh, no one can ever hold them against me because I've never uh, acted in a malicious manner. And that's, uh, that's what my grandfather told me, that uh, life is not perfect and it will mm -hmm. never be perfect. And he used to tell me to, that... Uh, as a human species, God has given you this brain to use, but yes. always exercise it in, in a manner that you must feel comfortable. Is that whatever you do, is it acceptable to, to God? And, and that's how I run my life. Um, and sometimes people think I'm tough, uh, I'm, I'm, um, I'm stubborn. Uh, unfortunately, that, that, that's how I, I, was, uh, I was made because when I believe in something, I'm, I do it uh, regardless of how other people actually feel. Because right. one of the things that I've been really taught was that um, I must never allow friendship to, to determine uh, my decisions because that's very, very dangerous. Because uh, relying on someone else's advice, the person might obviously be giving you uh, mm -hmm. malicious uh, might have a malicious agenda. If yes, one thing taught me to listen to people and take advice, but ultimately I must take ownership of the decision that I've made. Whether the decision I've taken is right or wrong, I must all take ownership. I must never just say, no, I took this decision because of so and so. If I've taken a decision, I've listened mm -hmm. to people, I've accepted, then I must take personal uh, the ownership of the decision yes. that I've taken. And that's right. how I operate. That's why throughout my life, I've never really been the one uh, to be swayed uh, by, by more psychology. Mm -hmm. I don't really just follow other people blindly. So that sometimes, you know, success is going in the opposite direction to the mob many, many times. So we, you, before politics, you were known as South Africa's one of South Africa's top entrepreneurs, a business leader, someone who came from a very, very difficult place in terms of opportunity and sort of what, what was made available to you. What got you to 
the point of you want to build up your own business, your own empire, rather than going to look for a job, as an example? Because I think entrepreneurship is something so valuable. Oh, sorry. Yep. What happened, uh, you know, uh, to, to education has always been really key for me. Yes. And uh, when I um, wanted to pursue my education route, I went to university in 1979. Mm. Uh, unfortunately, during the second year of my studies at the University of the North, uh, the apartheid government decided to close the university due to um, protest uh, activities mm -hmm. at the time. And uh, when they called us back after a month or so, I decided not to go back. I wanted to focus my energies on leaving the country to go here for military training. But mm -hmm. God had another plan for me, it, uh, shielded me from getting reliable contacts to get me uh, um, to leave the country. And I thought in the meantime, while I was waiting for the contacts, let me find employment. Those days in South Africa, mm -hmm. People who did not work were those who did not want to work. Employment opportunities were everywhere. You could jump right. from one business from one business to the other if you felt up, uh, uh, exploited. And I'm actually a living example uh, um, of um, someone who exploited um, business because right. I worked 30 months in my life for two companies. Seven months for Motani in sorry for Spa Pretoria as a dispatch clerk. And mm -hmm. they and 23 months for Motani Industries, both as a dispatch club. And and I'll keep telling this, which is true, that when I worked for SPA, when I worked for Motani, I wasn't working for them. I actually exploited them because they paid me to get experience because mm -hmm. it's something that I recognize that you know what, uh, with the not obviously getting my university degree and being able to leave the country, the only way I can do is to one day go into business. But before going to business, I needed the experience. And I, I exploited business. I exploited spa, giving me 175 rands a, a, a month. And they thought they were exploiting me. In the meantime, they gave me 75 rands. They paid me 75 rands to give me the experience. Mm -hmm. And uh, seven months later, I joined Motani, worked for them for 23 months. And then 30 months later, uh, 10 to 22, they realized that I'm 22, I'm getting old, I needed to succeed, and it's time for me. At that time, I'd already saved enough money to buy a, a, vehicle, uh, a motor car because mm -hmm. I needed to really be a commission sales rep because we are not allowed as black people to go into, into normal business. But yes. before, uh, before going into business, I needed stability in my life. God gave me the wisdom to recognize stability to mm -hmm. be a successful business. That's why before buying the car, I got married. Two months later, bought a car. Two months later, resigned. Everything else is is, is history. Right. Um, so I started uh, selling stuff on commission basis, including in 1983, came across a company in Johannesburg. They had a brand called Super Kale. I sold for them for 19 months. And during that 19 months, I discovered uh, a print, a money printing machine, and mm -hmm. I, but I decided I'm not going to print money for someone else. I'm going to do it myself. And because of my views in life, um, uh, something that uh, I feel really very proud about, because you can imagine, I had no technical know-how to make mm -hmm. this product, but I wanted to make them, and I said, I'm going to make them. I approached a white African working for this company who was a chemist, and I took a chance. I said, Johan, Joseph and I can sell this product, you can make it, we're making money for someone else, why don't we make money ourselves? Mm -hmm. And uh, everything else is history. You can imagine in 1984, approaching a white African, a relative, uh, yes. only discovered it's actually his wife, uh, Johan's wife, was related to the owners of this business. So you can imagine if uh, this guy had uh, declined my invitation, mm -hmm. but one thing, because of my upbringing, because of the teachings of my father, my grandfather, is that you can only accept failure after trying. And yes. now, yes, I approach your hand, Krill, he accepted. I looked at the positive side of life. I did not really uh, say, no, this is a white person. I, I, uh, I did not care about your hands. Um, racial makeup uh, mm -hmm. on how God created me. I needed his expertise and Johan needed my expertise as a salesperson. 
and everything else is history. Fantastic. Can you give us a little bit of insight into what it was like building your business then during the apartheid era? Because there were time restrictions when you could be out. There were, you know, rest, I think restrictions on everything that you encountered. What, what got you to push through? And the reason I'm asking that is talking to the youth of today where there's opportunity and ease to start your own business with the internet and everything that's available to them. If we can talk about how challenging it was when you started to build what you built. You can imagine in 1985 when I started the business in Harankua in, uh, in Buputatwana at the time, mm -hmm. in a 200 square meter factory. Uh, at the time, PW bought a um, heavy state of emergency, traveling, mm -hmm. uh, getting into townships all over the country. There will be the, the army in every, mm -hmm. in, in every entrance of, uh, of, a, of, of, a, of a township. Black people not allowed to open salons everywhere and so forth. So uh, it was really quite a challenging. Also, at the time, uh, the past laws were still um, yes. applicable. So you can imagine I had my own factory and the only way that I could avoid being arrested in Pretoria or Johannesburg or Cape Town was uh, to always have the mastery to duck and die from the police. I was a business owner paying taxes, but yes. I had to duck and die from the police because those days as a black person with your reference book, it had to be signed on a monthly basis by your white employer, given mm -hmm. restrictions where you're supposed to be. And I decided, no, I'm not going to be restricted by this. And I became a master of uh, ducking and diving from the police. And uh, not once uh, ever was I ever arrested for a pass offense. I would always negotiate my, my way out. Um, that's one thing I learned at the time to make sure that every morning when I leave home, I'm in a suit and a tie. Uh, and, right. uh, that made it easy to negotiate my way out if if I get cornered uh, by the police. Right, Ab absolutely fantastic. You you spoke a little bit earlier about what you've seen happen with the country over the last twenty four twenty five years. How how was your your sense and your your dream for South Africa? after the 94 elections, you know, winning the Rugby World Cup, there was the sense of euphoria, the rainbow nation. What were your hopes and dreams for South Africa then? You know, when I voted for Nelson Mandela on the 27th of uh, April, mm -hmm. 1994, including obviously prior to that as, as black business, how we used to assist uh, some of uh, the so-called uh, comrades um, mm -hmm. when they got into trouble, helping them to get lawyers and so forth. And I voted for Nelson Mandela and the ANC because uh, uh, we grew up regarding them as our liberators, uh, people uh, who had a social conscience. And uh, I thought uh, I was going to see an explosion of the Heman Mashabas because mm. uh, I'm not a unique person and I did not really do anything unique. You just really need a government that can create an uh, uh, enabling equal opportunity environment. Unfortunately, uh, we only enjoyed um, real, true democracy and proud, be proud of Africans just over uh, five years of Mandela's uh, mm. tenure because uh, Peter Stavon Becky came and I voted for him in 1999. But uh, that's when I discovered uh, the ANC not really be the party that I grew up thinking that the way that this for me was more of a criminal enterprise than um, people who were concerned about the, the plight of uh, South Africans, particularly blacks, who were mm. oppressed under under the many years of colonialism, uh, many years of uh, of the National Party um, uh, brutality. I thought. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's going to be a party with a social conscience. I'm afraid uh, to, uh, today, uh, I don't know, it's, sometimes it becomes difficult for me when I do, have to do a comparison between uh, uh, apartheid and the ANC government in terms of uh, who's better. Honestly, I find it difficult mm -hmm. because I live in a country where today 86 people have been murdered every day, 11 minutes. Uh, as a woman in this country is is is, is raped 
recorded uh, cases. Yes. I live in a country where we've got open all the, the borders where you have international drug cartels um, uh, associated with the international uh, terrorist organization. They come into our country, give drugs to our youth, rob them of their future and in the process that disrupt our, our, our families. We sit with the highest unemployment rate in the world. So I think, honestly, personally, I think if I do a comparison, and I remember at university, and, I, and I'm a student of history, even when I left university, I still, um, I'm an avid reader. And I, you know, you, you, uh, you know, as part of what I was studying, I was studying political science, you do comparisons of political systems or governments. Mm -hmm. So right now, honestly, every time I, uh, I actually do notes uh, to really look at apartheid and, and ANC, um, who's better? I find it difficult to, to, to reconcile, uh, to say which one was better. I find both systems being brutal, being evil. Mm -hmm. So your time after, so five years after Madiba is elected, and South Africa becomes a democracy through to the birth of Action SA. What was your thought process? What brought you to starting the, the party and to starting Action SA? Okay, would you guys give me a minute to charge sure. my, my laptop is not on charger. Just give me a minute. To the Perfect. Here. Cool. Great. Uh, sorry for this. Um, no problem. Yeah, because I just really rushed in uh, to do this interview. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, we appreciate you know, that. Yeah. In my mid fifties, um, or actually earlier than that, you know, after actually um, having the uh, losing losing confidence in the ANC, mm. I started looking for a political party to vote for, and I started voting for the for the DA. And I used to really be vocal about um, some of the things that South Africa was uh, not doing right. Particularly, mm -hmm. the, yeah, it, it started with um, passing of what are called draconian labor laws, making mm -hmm. it difficult um, for businesses, particularly SMEs, uh, to to thrive. I mean, the influence of Kosatu and the so-called South African Communist Party. It's a case to this country. Mm. And I started raising this with the ANC colleagues to say, guys, you are going to destroy businesses. Uh, communism has never worked out. Uh, mm -hmm. You guys, uh, you must have studied this. Uh, you know from 1917 when Lenin and uh, Stalin took over Russia. Look at every country in the, in the world. Communism cannot really be the answer to prosperity and mm -hmm. giving black people the prosperity that they deserve, uh, you know. And then look at uh, this uh, government. Uh, the first big investment that they made was on the arms deal. At the time, South Africans, uh, black South Africans, uh, needed housing because apartheid government was never building uh, uh, accommodation for mm -hmm. houses of black people. Land was an issue. Instead of addressing this, the first investment these people make is on armament. At the time, South Africa was the darling of the world. Yeah. And you raise these matters with them to say, but guys, what do you need the armaments for? The apartheid government, as you are aware, had one of the most powerful um, uh, armies in, in the world. So in terms of the, the countries of uh, the safety, we, we did not really need to invest in the armament. But at the end of the day, the reason why they were in for, 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 for investment in the arms deal mm. was to start really stealing the public monies. And uh, that's when uh, I started having a fallout with them. And then compounded uh, by the, the Zimbabwean situation, how mm -hmm. uh, Abu Mbek is quite diplomacy, that uh, ultimately destroyed uh, that beautiful country called Zimbabwe. Those are some of the things, examples, there are lots of, uh, more, uh, you know, mm -hmm. but uh, just to really give you a sense of things that really got me really disappointed with the ANC. And every time as a, as a businessman, I will mm -hmm. be invited to speak to people on a regular basis. 
uh, be here in South Africa or anywhere in the world, I would not hold anything back about um, my uh, unhappiness uh, and uh, uh, with what's happening in South Africa. And uh, ANC started uh, feeling that I'm a traitor, but uh, right. that did not really deter me because um, I wasn't really born to make friends and, mm. uh, you know, and uh, when I raised these issues, um, you know, to created a rift between me and, and some of the people in the ANC, but uh, I, I was happy to live uh, mm. with it. And um, culminating in 2015, when the DA uh, uh, approached me to become their mayoral candidate for the city of Johannesburg, I tried to assist them to, mm -hmm. to get someone else. Unfortunately, I did not succeed. Uh, no one wanted uh, people who were credible, who could unsee the ANC, were not want, uh, did not want anything to do with the DA. But at the time, for me, it was the only option, viable option to unsee the ANC. And I accepted and I spoke to my family. They gave me the full support. And uh, remember, uh, uh, August 2016, we removed the ANC from from the yes. city of Johannesburg for the, in, in the first round. Mm -hmm. um, Ryan had a, a, three, uh, um, a seven way coalition government uh, for three years, from 2016 to 2019. And my goodness, to my surprise, uh, I think it's around about August um, 2019, that's when I came across um, secret meetings between the ANC and, and the DA um, 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 to uh, facilitated by the IRR to have a, uh, the ANC to come out with a motion of no confidence and mobilizing DA, uh, some of the DA um, councillors to support that motion. So luckily, because um, I'm a son of God and uh, mm -hmm. um, and I'm, uh, I wasn't born yesterday, people um, brought this to my attention and I informed Musi about this and uh, giving him the evidence and Musi failed to do anything about it. And um, and I warned South Africans beforehand, mm -hmm. I said, if Helen is uh, elected uh, to come back to the DA because she's the one leading uh, this mm -hmm. negotiations with the ANC, I said, if she comes back to the DA, I'm afraid um, I will have to terminate uh, my membership, stop being the mayor. And they thought I was joking. Helen was elected on the 20th of October, uh, 2020. The following morning, 10 o'clock on Monday, called a press conference, I resigned. And, uh, right. Which was really quite, really sad. It was not an easy decision, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it's life. Uh, um, people will step you at the back. Um, that's why, if uh, what I've just said to you, mm -hmm. uh, the, then father taught me to be careful of uh, human beings because not all of them actually mean well. And uh, yes. but what is actually interesting about uh, this development is that as soon as uh, I resign, the outcry of South Africans that I start mm -hmm. my own political party. Uh, that's what led uh, to the launch of um, um, the People's Dialogue. Um, um, which I ran for uh, for three months of, uh, because I wanted to test uh, to see I needed the scientific basis to see if mm -hmm. these are real people. Say so firstly and secondly, I wanted to see if um, these people actually say the same values as I do. And uh, everything else is history. I gave the assurance to my family because I needed them to fund mm -hmm. this very expensive project. And uh, the family wanted to me to give them the budget. I said, I don't, uh, unfortunately, I've never run something like this. I don't know what it's going to cost. But wherever we're going to invest, it will be investing in the future of, uh, of our children, our grandchildren, mm -hmm. and our country. And uh, the only guarantee I gave them was that if I have uh, less than half a million signatories, uh, I won't proceed. Three months later, 2.4 million signatories of right. South Africans all over the country who said I'm a study political party. So that made it impossible for me uh, to um, to really turn people down like, a, you know, because you can imagine when I resigned uh, at the time, ANC and DA, remember, they, they um, refused to accept the responsibility. They said, no, I'm just mm -hmm. coming out nonsense but yes. uh, fortunately you know when you lie you, you, it's, it's impossible to uh, to always remember uh, 
Uh, yep. Two years later, in an interview with SABC, Helen Zeller confirmed uh, the secret meetings between the ANC and the and the DA. So, and and I've accepted because obviously I had evidence. I did not need Helen to uh, to confirm, but they, we we've got an interview of Helen actually confirming. Um, uh, the uh, existence of uh, this uh, plan uh, to oust me between the ANC and the DA. From the DA, my sin was that um, I was focusing too much attention on poor communities. And okay. for the ANC, they were scared of uh, my resolve uh, to pursue um, uh, uh, corruption charges against senior mm -hmm. members of the ANC. So, I think for the DA, it's, it's unfortunate that I must be called an EFF mayor uh, 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 because uh, I'm providing services to poor people. As if um, providing services um, uh, to poor people is a, a preserve of the EFF. Uh, EFF mm -hmm. that are in government in Ekurulen and everywhere else, uh, are they providing services to poor people? And, and my entry into government, into politics, wasn't to serve a particular uh, uh, interest. I was there to serve all South Africans, particularly the, the poor. My view as a capitalist, I'm a, I'm a capitalist uh, who with a social conscience. I don't believe in saying to rich people come down to the poor. I believe to say poor people, let's uplift you. We encourage them to, to leave them and work all of us as privileged South Africans. Let's yes. work together to leave poor people. But unfortunately, DA doesn't believe uh, in, in, in that. And the ANC is determined uh, to completely determined to keep black people poor and uh, and, um, uh, and and dependent on the state because uh, they they have uh, they were taught uh, by by the best in the world uh, the the communist uh, mm -hmm. communist right uh, they they know how to oppress people and and control them you control people if you can uh, obviously take away their um, self um, dependence mm -hmm. so if you want to control people uh, tell them they are victims all the time tell them they are slaves tell them everything wrong with the government uh, uh, to, uh, it is good to do it, uh, with apartheid. Uh, the president can have money under mattresses. No, it is HF rule. John van Riebeck has a mistake. It's got nothing to do with us, uh, you know. So, uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, that's a kind of uh, the political environment um, under which we operate. But um, we determined this section as a we are we uh, we are here to ensure that. Um, people wake up uh, to the lived experience. And uh, we, I'm really so pleased that people are responding more than positive. I think this was demonstrated by our electoral support we received uh, in the 2021 local government elections, supported by nine by-elections we've already run. We are ready right now as I'm speaking to you. I'm in Soweto, going to be spending the full day here. Mm -hmm. Last week I announced um, the two last uh, premier candidates, the Western Cape and Gauteng. So Action SA is ready. And um, we've got all nine committed South Africans. Yesterday, we paid uh, our fees with, uh, with the IEC. Uh, this morning, I'm sure by now, because first thing this morning, uh, our governance the, the, the department was going to submit uh, the list of uh, uh, of uh, of uh, our candidates. So we we read. Um, we're waiting for 2029, and let's see how South Africans are going to vote. But uh, we 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 confident um, of success because. Uh, I'm not in this game uh, to be a, uh, in opposition. I don't need the job as as a member of parliament. Um, yes, we need to govern. We need to govern. That's the only way I believe I can make a difference to the lives of South Africans is being in government. And being in government that means uh, you, you 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 leave friendship out and really focus on people of of, of South Africa. What are your your goals for? the country where would you like to see south africa go what would you like to do to guide south africa to where you would like it to be first of all obviously i think uh, you know our first order of business is to ensure that we don't end up with an anc government mm -hmm. that's very important 
Okay, if we put that aside, then, okay, why then do you want to to, to remove the ANC? So that we, we can come out with programs to do away with all race-based policies in South Africa. Mm -hmm. We must treat South Africans as South Africans. We suffered under apartheid, we suffered under ANC's discriminatory laws. We need to unite this nation because united as in one nation will make the great. We're losing skills um, mm -hmm. uh, every day because of uh, our racial policies. We need to bring the, the rule of law. We need to bring specialized units. We must, as a matter of agency, bring the Scorpions uh, back to deal with cases of corruptions. We need to bring the, in the past uh, what was then uh, called the Brixton Medan Robbery Squad. Mm -hmm. We can't live in a country where 86 million people are, uh, I mean, 86,000 people are murdered every day and we think it's normal. We need specialized units who must deal with these cases of um, of murder. We need to deal with this rapist. We need to declare war against uh, drug cartels. We've got to chase them mm -hmm. away from, from from South Africa. And we've got to do away with the parole uh, for murderers, uh, rapists, and, 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 and drug play, uh, 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 drug cartels. Mm -hmm. And uh, we need to invest a uh, uh, short term on, on establishment of uh, drug rehab center for our youth who are victims. They are not uh, the ones we need to focus. We need to bring the build the drug. While we're chasing away mm -hmm. drug syndicates, we're not going to achieve, achieve that objective overnight. So that's why in the meantime, we must invest immediately in drug rehab center so that uh, these kids must uh, be given an, um, another chance. We need social justice. We need to, to deal directly with this issue of inequality in our, in our, in our, in our country. Um, and I believe, we believe as Section is the only way we can deal with inequality. We strongly believe uh, in, in Black economic empowerment. Not the ANC broad based black economic empowerment of 2003 that uh, that divides us along racial lines. So why, what we are saying is Action SA, we must come out with an, uh, uh, our own policy called uh, inclusive economic empowerment where we have um, uh, an, uh, an opportunity fund run by professional people accounting mm -hmm. to parliament on an annual basis let them report how much money they've uh, uh, collected and we as government guide them where they must start going to use this money they must go and build uh, schools in, in in poor communities mm -hmm. clinics make sure that they go and fund uh, the black entrepreneurs uh, in in the townships and so forth make to give them opportunities um, uh, because obviously getting funding for them from uh, from businesses but we don't uh, uh, benefit individuals we must benefit society we must build boarding schools uh, schools we must go and uh, work with the private sector to build affordable accommodation for poor communities we cannot live in a, in a country where people live in squalor when the private sector is prepared um, to build affordable accommodation all these hijacked buildings in in, yeah. in our cities uh, all over the country give them to the private sector this factories in babedehi Harangu industrial area where i started Give this business, these factories uh, to to private sector investments, uh, South African and in, in international, rent free. Mm -hmm. Give them massive tax breaks depending on how much money they're going to invest in our country and how many people they will they will uh, uh, they, they would invest. We we you know so this has you know some of the broad urgent things that we really need to do post um, the removal of ANC from power. Right. But, you know, and what I hear you talking about are not things that are difficult to implement. It's just choosing the right partners and working with the right partners to implement these things. To oh, well, honestly, mm. well, you know, things that I'm, I'm, I'm uh, articulating, or mm. this, you, know, it, you don't have to be a rocket scientist. You just yeah. really need a political will. You know, yeah. when I was the mayor of the city of Johannesburg with the inner city rejuvenation mm. uh, protocol, the residents of Johannesburg, making sure that every month I have a, um, a, a, a press conference, um, report the crime states uh, in, in, in the city of Johannesburg. I know national, the province and national police were not that were happy with me, but mm. at the end of the day, it, it was the right thing for me to do the report. The, um, JMPD every day. 
I need mm-hmm. to, to they must report and then end of the month with, with, with the chief of police we report to society on the type of crimes that um, yes. that uh, we are facing and what we've done with, uh, with with those cases including obviously members of the police uh, who we were found to be on the wrong side of the law we mm-hmm. expose them and uh, those who are doing the right things uh, we give them awards and give them recognition Mm-hmm. These are things that honestly, you don't have to be a rocket scientist or be yeah. an Einstein. These are things that are honestly, um, they re- just require the, the logic and, 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 mm-hmm. and the commitment and the will to do. And I think that's your experience as well from business and running businesses. You know, you, these are the simple things to implement that have a big difference and a profound impact. Absolutely. I think that's what I'm saying is, uh, you know, honestly, if we're, we're not going to unite as, as South Africans to mm. coexist, uh, this country might as well just forget about uh, success. I think uh, I've learned, I'm a living example mm. of uh, four years um, of uh, working with South Africans mm-hmm. during apartheid days when uh, PW Bot and the National Party said you cannot uh, uh, work together. We were I worked with South Africans, um, yeah. and um, and in 27th of April 1994, I wanted Malnella to take this to the next le- next level. And you remember, he came out with the Rainbow Nation. Mm. And that's why I was really so excited because I knew uh, and expected uh, the Rainbow Nation to be a, an explosive economic miracle that the world has ever seen. What happened? These communist evil people, they've really destroyed everything mm. else that they inherited in 1994. So can South Africa be saved? Well, uh, I, uh, I'm, I'm not really working because uh, I have any plans of failure. Uh, oh, there we go. South Africa can really be saved, but it's not going to be saved uh, by, by my prayers only. Uh, uh, South Africa is going to be saved by hard work. Uh, that's the reason I'm talking to you. I'm right now in so way to you can look at our so you can follow our social media platforms. I'm going to be spending uh, a full day in so it with thousands of volunteers uh, doing house to house, making sure that we get uh, the people to really go out and vote because uh, people have uh, lost um, hope in, in, in our democracy. They don't realize the power of their votes. The reason I'm here myself leading uh, this charge with a team of activists uh, going house to house, uh, covering every family because of high unemployment rate, the great thing about it, people are home. Well, right. 46, 40% of people are unemployed in this country. So we're going to tell, the, we're telling them guys, you want employment, you you want uh, uh, your dignity back. Let's vote, uh, vote uh, this government out. The most powerful tool you have uh, to uh, to really save yourself and your family, it's actually by voting this uh, um, government out. And that's what we do. And and, and fortunate enough, the reception is overwhelming. People also are tired. Yes. And, so, and the thing is, and people also wait to, you cannot lie to them that their lives have improved. No, I think uh, mm. if you want to upset anyone in so we to tell them their their lives have improved, uh, they they know their lives have gotten worse. Right. In the last in the in the last eight years of our democracy, it improved uh, the first few years, but I can tell you the last twenty years has been uh, mm. one way down. So, you sort of answered my next question to say, but what can what do you expect from South Africans? And what should South Africans be doing in order to help save their own country? Well, it's uh, it, uh, firstly to really get South Africans to, to participate. And mm-hmm. those that are that have got the means, they are privileged and, and, and do not have the time to recruit. They must financially support uh, political parties that they believe in and not really underestimate the type of uh, financial support you can give. You can imagine we want 87 days uh, to mm. elections. Political parties like Action SA, where we don't get support uh, from parliament, they've now increased uh, the support to political parties by further from 1.3 billion rands to 1.5. Mm. And uh, ANC gets 57% of that. 
to fund uh, their, 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 their exploitation and abuse. Mm -hmm. Political parties like Action SA, we don't get the, the, the support. Uh, we rely on South Africans, uh, give, whether you give us 5,000 or 10,000, mm -hmm. whatever amount that you can give. We, we as South Africans uh, would appreciate it because as I'm saying today, I'm going to I've got a uh, I'm going to have a plus between uh, uh, five hundred and a thousand uh, uh, volunteers spread across uh, so way to go doing house to house. I need to to make sure that they've got water, they've got mm -hmm. drinks got lunch, they are putting up posters, uh, I need um, the, 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 our policy documents that they live in every house and so forth. All these things, they don't uh, come from church or from uh, mm. uh, from, from, from the aid. I need the resources to really be able to, to, to have um, tools of trade to ensure that I can get more and more the South Africans uh, uh, on the day of voting to go out and vote because sometimes uh, you know privileged south africans they take things for granted mm -hmm. like uh, poor, also poor people you have some poor people who are victims of uh, anc misrule someone would be probably say i'm not going to vote too because the voting doesn't help my goodness yes. and then on the other hand you have a privileged person concerned about uh, what's happening and he says no i don't want to get involved i'll just go and vote people don't realize uh, they can contribute financially in supporting political parties that um, that they, 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 uh, they believe can do the right things. That's how democracies all over the world have, have really been built. So for some of us with the work that we are doing, if South Africans are not going to support us, we can only work, look, one thing for sure, whether the people give us a financial support or not, um, mm -hmm. we are going to contest. Uh, right. and, and, and the more resources we can get, the better chance of us uh, getting the turnout. Let me just give you an example of um, the opportunity that exists to answer the ANC. If you look at the ANC over the last uh, three elections, in 2019, they, they were voted in by 10 million people. Only 18.6 million people voted. 17.3 17 million people did not vote. Half of the 17 million were not even registered to vote. This time around, because mm. of XNSA's uh, aggressiveness uh, in voter education, at least we're sitting with 27.7 million people who are, vote, who are registered uh, to vote. Right. And if you look at now ANC uh, in 2021, they were voted in by just over 7 million South Africans. So if you now look at uh, all the statistics, ANC, will they get 8 million people voting for, 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 for ANC? They can ban the Mutis and whatever like they did in Kimberley over the weekend. They'll, there's no way ANC will get over 8 million people to vote for them. But we have a voting pool of 27.7 million people who are registered to vote. Now, the challenge is to, to, to make sure that uh, we can get majority of them on the 29th of May to turn out to vote. And the only way to get them is not by having this discussion with you or I can run mm -hmm. uh, 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 do interviews on television. It's door to door. Go into yeah. the, the family here so way to where the entire family is not working and they're registered to vote. You show them five of you. You know, the, the, the five of you will make a hell of a difference. You inspire them to understand the power of, of their votes on the 29th. And uh, as I say, but now I need the volunteers and volunteers who are not uh, uh, um, uh, employed. So I need the tools of trades, like making sure that we've got posters, we've got t-shirts, we, 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 we can feed those people as they're working, doing mm -hmm. volunteer volunteer work and so forth. So the privileged South African can really play such a key role uh, by do giving donations uh, to, to political parties like HNSA committed uh, to, the, uh, to the success of our country. Right. I think going door to door and reminding people about the value of their vote is reminding them that they actually have power, they have control, Absolutely. and they can they can be in charge of where their lives are going, which is, it, it's a, the voting is vital, but that's such an important thing to do for a community is to remind them that they have power and control over their lives. Uh, just on, on two points, how, 
if you, speaking to business South Africa and also to international business, in view of the, the, the poor communities in South Africa, how important is business and a good relationship with local and international business in building the country and bringing people out of poverty, growing the middle class? Well, look, I think, unfortunately, uh, business in, 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 in South Africa um, um, over the last uh, 30 years of our democracy have really been party to, um, working with this ANC. Perhaps mm -hmm. um, they thought ANC meant well. Uh, so I think, unfortunately, uh, our business leaders in this country uh, have been uh, part of the problem uh, because of their um, close relationship uh, with the ANC. So unfortunately, um, uh, big business uh, and, uh, uh, has not really played a, a, a constructive role. Perhaps in their in their world, uh, under impression, ANC is the uh, only solution to this country, and, and some of us unfortunately differ with them. But that relation, that close relationship and proximity with the ANC, that's what has led uh, to the level of corruption because mm -hmm. they ended up in all their boards uh, having this o o ANC corrupt people, getting them tenders and uh, and and. Uh, uh, playing government relations job and so forth. So I think um, captains of industry in this country, yeah, to a large extent, not all of them, obviously. I think mm -hmm. one should not really paint everyone with the same brush. But I think if if you look at it at a, at a bigger scale, and unfortunately, captains of industry in this country um, are part of the problem that South Africa is sitting with at the moment. Right. What what can they do in order to perhaps change the direction of where we are headed because i don't think in my personal opinion where we headed is so good if we don't have a change uh, because we don't see things improving well the thing is for as long as uh, they are prepared uh, to have this uh, close proximity to the nc uh, or being scared to, to speak out because mm. a big business is too scared to speak out i cannot really accept um, that um, as, as an independent uh, person, uh, a leader of society, because as a as mm. captain of industry, you have the responsibility uh, in a democratic dispensation to raise uh, your voice. But majority of them are too scared uh, to, uh, to raise their voices. Perhaps they've got small uh, skeletons. Unfortunately, you mm. remember Lamene, uh, uh, once at, uh, in the ANC, that's why they cannot speak because they've got small onion and things. Maybe some some in the, in, uh, some captains of industry they've got small onion and things. It is for that reason that um, they are silenced. I don't know. Right. I, I, okay. Honestly, I can't speak for them as to why they are not raising openly raising mm. the, uh, their consent and distancing themselves uh, from the ANC. Mm. Why is the the why are the poor communities and it, it's a, a question that can answer itself. But it, why are the poor communities in South Africa so vital, so important? Why do they need to be looked after as a priority? Well, uh, it's a moral thing to do. Uh, I think uh, I don't want to live side by side uh, with um, with poverty. Uh, I was born in poverty, which was man-made by the apartheid government. My family wasn't poor because they wanted to be poor. My mother was hardworking. My father, I believe, was a hardworking, uh, religious, God-fearing person. My grandfather worked as a security guard uh, for the Karanguan municipality. In his own life, never really achieved anything uh, financially. The only thing he could leave for me was his bicycle, which probably was food years old. That's the only thing I inherited from my grandfather. I never inherited anything from my, my father. So I don't want to live side by side uh, with poverty. I've been fortunate enough uh, to really have the financial independence to live anywhere in the world. But I've chosen to live here in South Africa and in invest um, in, 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 in helping South Africa not to really be another failed African state. And the yeah. only way it can be done it's uh, by uh, getting the votes of, of of the black majority who are today not actually voting and their heart fall with ANC. 
not especially here in Soweto. I mean, uh, the, yeah, the, the, the people are hurtful, um, you know, but they must be some of them make wrong decisions by not going out to vote because mm. they don't understand democracy. So that's why house to house visits are very important to make sure that we we give them the power because ultimately in the democratic dispensation, the voters are, are the bosses. But the ANC has actually instilled in the people uh, a sense of dependency mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and, uh, and, uh, and and uh, people don't uh, were never given an opportunity to rely on, on on themselves because you deprive them of education, you 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 destroy businesses, and and you get people to live on three hundred and fifty rands a month. You allow the drug cartels to destroy them. So yeah, uh, but uh, people are seeing this through, but some don't. It, uh, you know, so that's why it's important to do the work that I'm doing, mobilizing uh, uh, our activists here in Soweto and other places to do house to house to make sure that uh, we can get majority of them. Because if we are not going to get the majority of South Af Black South Africans to go out and vote, we might end up with another ANC government with less vote. Yes, which is not sort of really where we want to be heading. So uh, we, we are running out of time a little bit. Um, we're very grateful for your time because we know you've got such a busy day today. What would you like to say in closing to South Africans and I think also to the world about South Africa? I'd, I would really like to appeal to South Africans. Um, let us join hands. So those that obviously are patriots, um, and, and not really be angry with South Africa. Let us be angry with the ANC. There's absolutely nothing wrong with South Africa. Mm. The problem is the ANC government. And uh, let's work uh, towards um, uh, holding hands uh, to ensure that we can mobilize South Africans uh, to go out and vote on the 29th uh, of, of May without um, uh, 87 days away so we don't have time on our side mm -hmm. and at the same time appeal to the international community please um, whatever the ANC is doing please is not um, ANC mm -hmm. does not represent us one thing I know uh, as uh, him and Mashaba ANC does not represent me and I, and I know ANC does not represent the majority of South Africans please uh, give us a chance uh, to ensure that we can remove this government so that we can bring in a government that can work with like-minded um, civilized nations so that one day South Africa can be among the civilized nations, uh, prosperous uh, nations. We just need to let be given a chance. Absolutely fantastic. Herman Mashaba, thank you so much for your time today. We greatly appreciate it. And uh, looking forward to connecting with you maybe tomorrow as well, just to hear how, how it went today in Soweto. Um, I'm going to finish the recording and then I'll just chat to you afterwards. So thank you so much for your time today. Okay, thank you so much. All right.